On this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast, we see Dean's single man tear. We talk about where trash pandas. Plus, hashtag save Maddie. Oh! Let's do this. Welcome to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. I'm Diana. And I'm Liz. And this week we're talking about season two, episode 17, Heart. Is that what it's called? Somehow I did not get the episode in my notes. I was like, <laughs> what? I thought it was like Wolf Boy or something. And I'm looking at what I pulled down. And I'm like, huh, that doesn't say the title. Anyways, okay. How was your week? Uh, it was pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I mean, I, I'll say that. I mean, sure. It was pretty good. We're just going to go with that. It's easier than explaining. But yeah, um, just some minor work crises. But I saw a really good artist out of um, Kentucky um, this weekend uh, called Jeremy Pinnell. His music is very uh, 90s country feeling, but with a little bit of outlaw to it. So it's it's some good vibe to it. Um, I really very much enjoy it. That's my little shout out right there for that. Um, and uh I'm trying to think. I feel like I did something else, but Oh, well, my, one, one of my stepchildren was in town, so we were spending a lot of time. But yeah, not, not too bad. Not too bad. You were being, you were being an evil stepmom. Did uh, you make yeah. him clean the cinders? I should have. Okay. Like, I don't have a fireplace, but I'm just going to make some cinders. Dump, I'm just going to burn some shit and dump it on the floor so you can clean it up. <laughs> I guess like you just dump your ashtray out and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> clean this. <laughs> clean it, huh? You cannot go to the ball. <laughs> No, oh, it's it was cool though. We had a good we had a good visit and uh, we did um had some good times just hanging out, a lot of pool time, you know, chill chill end of summer shit like you do, and uh, going into uh, and oh the big exciting news is so I've talked about Duchess Deville many times on here. Well, uh, her husband uh, Fairlane <laughs> is back in the garage, <laughs> so my my car's mate is uh my husband's car and uh it got back from paint and body and it looks fucking sick it does and i'm so glad that you the the pictures that someday we'll post whenever we decide to go through them um uh uh, fairly went to the same place where we took pictures at uh for the podcast that someday you'll see i don't know someday Someday. we'll decide (laughs) but yeah so he he took it and it was his his car is a 57 Ford custom 300 aka Fairlane. i get there's nuanced difference anyways but he, he got this really cool custom thing done where they where you uh the edsel taillights that got um his car was modified to put edsel taillights on it it's a really cool custom mod for his car and he's quite happy with it so it looks so okay. we'll, we'll share pictures of, i'll send a picture of, uh, yeah picture yep so yeah how about you you had fun uh, I did. I had a very exciting uh, work week, which is finally, I don't want to jinx it. Don't I'll jinx it. it. I don't jinx it. But it was, uh, you yeah, know, lots of jobs sucked. Uh, I didn't have a lot of sleep. Uh, like pretty much after like we ended recording last week, it went straight into Liz lost sleep for an entire week. But I also had friends coming to town, so I'm trying to <laughs> like juggle friends and work. And thankfully, at least one of them works in the industry, so she just you know understood what was happening. So it's very laid back. But we, you know, I got to take her around and tootle some places. I took her for us. Uh, she's a whiskey girl, so I took her to you uh, for some drinks at Treaty Oak, Yum. and uh, which unfortunately, like their uh, their tasting room is still closed. I wish they would oh. open that back up so because i'm air conditioning yeah um so but i mean they actually are doing flights now at like their their one of their main bigger bars so um 
I went and did that, got to check out finally the French Texas restaurant here, which is great. And our friend Tina, who lives in New York, like uh, pre-ordered a bottle of rosé and we had a very silly hostess who we, it was kind of good though, because she walked in, she's like, I see you pre-ordered a bottle of rosé. And I'm like, well, bitch, that was supposed to be a surprise. Um, And she was like 12 and she was like, I feel so bad. But you know, the good thing is like, we would not have known that was supposed to be there. And we probably would have ordered other drinks and then been like, oh, wait. Well, yeah, yeah, drink that too. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Well, and for, it was a lot of pressure though, because Carlotta, uh, my friend, uh, is allergic to a lot of things, including mm. sulfites. She was like, mm. I can drink like a glass of this. And I was like, well, I guess I have to drink this bottle of rose. And which mm. normally is not a problem, but, you know, for over an hour and a half, like with dinner, as, and it was a dry rose, but it was still like, a little fuck like i was like and finally like, well tina, it's always harder when tina, the pressure's you ever on listen to this episode i'm really sorry we didn't finish that bottle so but you have to get caught up in the podcast to hear that so someday you'll learn that i we just left half that bottle on the table Aww. probably like a quarter of it uh but it was delicious and they had creme brulee which is my favorite dessert love it and it love is it. so good oh so God. good and we went to Wimberley and we found a new swimming hole and got in the river for like the first time in forever. And I really needed like natural river water. Like it just says something for your soul. And where where that uh, creek is at, so where they basically there's like a waterfall that goes through there that was natural. And but they like dammed it up more to make that area bigger. And when they did that, they found a ton of artifacts uh, from the natives in the area. And they're in supposedly like this area was supposed to be a really sacred site for uh the natives that lived in the land at that point you know back back in the day this is right by the devil's backbone that we talked mm-hmm. about last week and so it was just even though it was really cold and i was answering work calls while i was getting you know in there um because of course like somebody from uh, my customer was like i'm for days like i'm going to call you and they called me i'm like and i was like bitch i'm at the river and he was like, what? I'm like, I don't care. Like, I am at the river. Like, this is, if for me to deal with your ass, oh. like, I needed a break. But anyway, so it was cold because the the there was, like, a breeze. But it was still, like, okay, for, like, just didn't get the titties wet. And I was like, we're just going to, like, try and, like, just hang out in here. And then, and then the of waist. course. Just to the waist. Just to the yeah. waist. That's and, the of course, because it's a river, like, right when we're getting out, the current switched. And like then the warm water came, or a bunch of children peed. I'm not sure what happened, but like yeah, one or the other was like, damn it! Like of course now like there's warm water running past you, but it was great. I got some Mexican food, uh, so yeah, it was a good weekend. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, what are you drinking tonight? I am drinking uh, McPherson, uh, which is a, another Texas wine. They're Chenin Blanc. I'm probably saying it wrong. Chenin no, you're Blanc. saying it right. Okay. It's from the Texas High Plains. I came across, I, this is not one I was super duper familiar with um, until a couple of months ago, I was at a bar in Dallas um, in, in Bishop Arts and they had their sparkling wine, which is fucking great. I say a few months ago, it was last year. It was fucking great. So anyways, I came across this at a, a Total Wine when I was restocking and I'm like, Bam, give it a shot. And it's pretty tasty. There we go. Nice. Um, I'm actually drinking a Coleman because oh, they were having their in, yeah they were having their end of summer sale so i yeah they had it was probably stuff i i just assumed you would know because you're in their club and it's probably it's probably stuff you already got in your summer batch um but it was basically uh like the rosé so it was just basically like hot stuff that you want to drink when it's hot yeah so um i had them ship me some of those and this is not the rosé not the hot ones but it's a bunch of whites and stuff but i imagine i drink the alabe um because i wanted a red wine and you know this the sad thing is is that i actually have another kind of expensive bottle of red wine that's open in the fridge because when i had i had a slumber party saturday night because another friend came over so we did girly things uh we i i'll just say we had a pillow fight because well, of course you did yeah of course we did we were going to send that to my friend's uh boyfriend and be like this is what happens when you leave me here oh this is also my friend who went to high school with jared padalecki by the way so uh she's going to their their 20th reunion um in a couple of months and he was a year older than her but maybe he'll still show up i don't know uh so that'd, that'd, uh, be, that'd be that'd be odd 
Yeah, but I opened that up and then I realized that I had a Bordeaux open in the fridge and I really wanted to drink the Bordeaux. So then like that got moved into the fridge, but then this wine came and I was like, I really want to drink that wine. So I don't know. I mean, I'm a terrible wine drinker. I'm a, I'm a wasteful uh, bitch. Such a wasteful <gasps> bitch. Um, anyways, this wine's delicious and it'll be fun tonight. Uh, so let's talk about this episode. Oh, I mean, I've got a lot of werewolf noises. Uh, so this was uh as diana said the name of it was heart oh what a terrible name um if this was i think so i think it's just a shitty name like it's just it's to me it's like really easy like you could have done better you could have you could have tried harder um but it was we had some really big hitters in this which is probably why this episode had a lot of heart (laughs) oh i see what you did there he did yeah i'm sorry i'm very sorry um so season two episode 17 this first aired march 22nd 2007 and it was directed by kim manners and written by sarah gamble so these are people who know like the characters really well they know the show and the storylines and work really hard you know worked really in alignment with kripke kind of on what this is going to so um i'm sure we'll have lots of comments about the people who acted in this i have a feeling that diana did some imdb maybe i didn't but i thought you might have but hmm. did you not a madison i did but nothing stood out without i saw uh, it smallville i mean she was a oh, smallville okay so person. i didn't, watch that. I didn't yeah. watch that anyways so we're gonna start off in Sorry. san francisco um and i do like i almost like was trying to think if i wanted to do san francisco when i'm doing my la trip next uh in halloween but i do miss san francisco a lot i love the bay area to visit never been. I, don't, I don't oh my god how have you well we have to do that the tiki bars are so good there's so many good tiki bars and just like fun things uh the only thing about san francisco is that it makes me claustrophobic yeah that's not fun i don't know it's kind of like being in a this. europe town though i mean like okay. also like the first time that i went there was living in new york and it was already like used to big city life but i was like this is like new york crammed onto a smaller island and there's a lot of hills and i don't like walking up hills so yeah. but the the food and the beverages are fucking amazing and also they start off at a bar and like nobody has masks on and they're all just like partying down i'm like oh, i remember that world you were so pretty <laughs> Uh, back in the you, day no. back in the day um, where you didn't feel you're risking your life to have a cocktail yeah uh, so yeah very fancy bar and i was like it looks like you know i'm like well, was it an office party they just chill at the bar it's basically they're chilling at a bar but it's a bunch of people that work together is what kind of like the vibe and um this guy comes up and is basically like totally hitting on the chick that's kind of the focal point here and um, i like how you said hitting and i said sexually harassing well it wasn't really it's a- it wasn't clear at that point that it was her boss. And maybe right. I knew that in the back of my mind that I was, but even if you like, to me, like this is clearly times have changed, times they have changed. Yeah. You think about no, the things. That yeah. a few times. And we've seen that a few times in this episode, like, well, that one, or not this episode, but this series is like, well, that was, that was over 10 years ago, obviously. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, so she, you know, and she kind of like lets it, lets it roll off and offers to said she already called him a cab so she's she's kind of like handles him um and then uh i was like she's laughing so i guess he hits on her a lot and so she watches him leave and then you see what i call emo dude <laughs> sitting and staring at her which by the way if there's like if you watch there's a youtube series about like something about felt emo and i will send you one list but they're hilarious and it kind of reminded me of uh Anyway, so he's like watching her and she like stops laughing and there's some ominous music. And you're like, oh shit, who's this guy? He gonna kill her. And then he disappears and she's like, all right, I gotta go. And so she like hauls ass, gets out yeah, of the- Yeah, I mean, just the past. I mean, this poor girl. I mean, she's getting sexually harassed at work and she's getting stalked out already. That, I'm like, damn, I mean, she, like yeah, you're putting up with like all the feminine shit. Like right now, that's like you're having a hard life, Maddie. Okay, go ahead. I don't think I've ever been stalked. I've been stalked. It's not fun. No, it sounds very unpleasant. Very unpleasant. So she's walking to her car alone in a dark parking lot. No, ma'am. Anyways, uh, and she hears a crash. And <laughs> also, like there's a parking lot in San Francisco. <laughs> well, yeah, San Francisco City. So she hears a crash. There's a dog in the trash cans. And so she gets in her car and she's pulled out of a parking lot. And you see then emo dude watching her drive away. 
So next morning, as we cut to back to the off or to the office, we went back there, but it's implied back there. So she's back at the office and she's doing her like, you know, she's doing like, I'm making the morning coffee for the office routine. And then she says, is that what happens in offices? Diana still goes to an office. I'm like, I don't know what that's like. I I bring my coffee with me. Sorry. (laughs) Our office is too small for that. Bring your own coffee. You're fine. There's like two of us. I don't want to clean a coffee pot for that. So but she's, she sees uh, blood on a door frame um, or on the door, the glass office door, opens the office. And the guy that was hitting on her, who is her boss, is real fucking dead and real fucking bloody on the desk, on the glass desk. So yeah. she screams. Yeah, the sexual harasser has been canceled. This is this is how cancel culture works now. We just rip them apart. That seems extreme. Hold on. It's, a, it's a little extreme, but you know, I mean, <laughs> he's not, he's not going to hit on her anymore yikes all right uh yeah so we cut immediately to the morgue which is a good big jump like usually they kind of like beat around the bush leading up to this i was kind of impressed i'm like all right we're getting straight to it motherfuckers i'm cursing all tonight anyways that's okay y'all are used to it it's it's fine Mm -hmm. if you've listened to this ever before you're used to it so they're at the morgue and they're pulling the uh, nate is his name they pull him his out him out of the um the drawer and uh and and also we have detective sam is back yeah i was gonna say we call sam detective um that body is all stitched up like it was torn the fuck up it's got scratches on so here is my actual question and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way to the the recently deceased. I don't know, I'm saying that there's a bad tie-in because you know Beetlejuice jokes. But anyways, do they actually? I'm, actually, like, I'm also right. actually wearing a Beetlejuice shirt by the way. She people, is. So. She is. So <laughs> give it. So like, if like a body was found like that, would they stitch it up? Um, for after an autopsy, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, it, so I mean, like I guess so. so they I guess didn't, they're assuming, they didn't, yeah, they didn't stitch up the wounds. Like they just it looked like, like it on his chest because his chest was like ripped the fuck was, open in the previous that was scene. Autopsy. And now it's not. Okay, I was just like, well, no, for autopsy, I know they do, but I was just like, was yeah, just I mean, if it's busy. being, I mean, a lot of that will go to and, the family and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I'm saying the more, not the more, the uh, funeral home would do right. a lot of that, but the it just kind of depends, I think, on like which. I, I doubt in San Francisco they're probably big enough so they can just send it straight on to the funeral home like that. Right. But I mean, mm-hmm. also like where those stitches were, that is general. We opened up the chest plate to see things. Right. It just looked like there are some lower down that are like, you know, I, I've seen, I watched enough like crime shows. I know the Y incision, blah, 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 blah. But like, it seemed like there was like on his belly and stuff like stitched up shit. I was like, that's weird. Anyways. Yeah. I mean, they didn't stitch up the other things, but they also did a really good job. I think of just the amount of, that was oh, some good was makeup work. Up. That, oh, was, yeah. that was some beautiful makeup work. Just Absolutely. like, especially down the arms and like, oh yeah, that was really good. The flashes. Yeah. So they, I also doc- wrote the Emmy doesn't know what he put what bit him, but I was just looked at that and I was like, me doesn't know what bit him. <laughs> and, <I was> like, <laughs> oh, and they, but she does refer to them as bites. And Sam asks, uh, Detective Sam is asking her off the record, and she's like, well, I think it's a wolf, basically. But unless the zoo was missing a wolf, that sure as hell wasn't that. So her backup response was pit bull. Which, by the way, this is not the first time we have seen pit bull hate on this show. So. Fuck that, Supernatural writers. Stop blaming pit bulls. That is a false accusation against a very sweet breed of dogs. There we go. Yep, we will, we will have Diana's pit bull lick your face to death. Yeah, yeah. And and make pig noises and roll around on the floor because she does a lot. Anyway, so, uh, but they did, t- but Sam guesses and it's right that the heart is missing. And um, so they figure out, so uh, we cut the guys talking and this is the first man they found in town dead without a heart. Um, all the other bodies that have been found without hearts were hookers. And it's always in the week leading up to the full moon. Yeah. So I mean, there are a lot of sex workers that have gone missing and all aligned with the lunar cycle, just like my cycle. But the cops also think it's a serial killer. But Dean gets really excited because it's very a excited. He's so excited. excited. You know who else is very excited that it's a werewolf? Liz. Liz is. You know why Liz is excited? Why? Because I've been wanting to talk about the werewolf trials ever since we started the show. So we're going <laughs> straight into Laura because I can't hold it back anymore because I want to talk about the werewolf trials. Uh, oh. Laura. 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 
awesome. Um, Diana, have you heard about the werewolf trials? I don't think I'm familiar with the werewolf trials. Yeah, I think I may have dropped it in here like once or passing. twice. Yeah. Okay, so um, the werewolf trials are something that was happening at the same time that the witch trials were happening in medieval Europe. And when I get to the numbers, you're going to freak out at how many of these things were actually happening. Um, we are, however, going to focus on France because that was where the majority of them, but they were all over. I also just like the, you know, we, we go to France a lot. I don't know. Yeah, good um, stories. Um, they, they were all over Europe. Uh, really, you know, there's a, a really good one from Germany, um, and I will include the links to the stuff about the German ones, but for time's sake and whatnot, I was like, let's just focus this on France. Um, so we're going to talk about, okay, so we're going to start off in, uh, I forgot what part of France, I don't know, it's all the same, they were speaking French somewhere. Um, so, um, this trial starts, the, the first trial that here is going to start in 1521, but the story goes back to 1502. And we have two protagonists in the first story, and that's Mike, uh, Michael, Michael, that would sound very Russian, um, Michel, 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 Michel Verdu. See, uh, or Verdung, that's such a fucking German name. Anyway, so, uh, well, Michael, Mikey Verdung, and Pierre Bourgeau. Uh, so when they were being uh going through their confession period uh pierre said that you know this all started in 1502 there was a big storm and it scared off all my sheep so while i was out looking for my flock i found three black horsemen and i don't know if that meant like the horses were black the guys riding the horses are black i don't know i guess three black horsemen so one of them comes up to pierre and he was like i will help you if you serve me as your lord and master. And he is like, I need my sheep. This sounds like a really good deal. And so he was like, okay, I'll come back in a week and I'll bind myself to you. And lo and behold, there's a sheep. Bah. So he finds a sheep. And a week later, the guy comes back and he is like, all right, ha, I'm a servant of the devil. Uh, do you want to serve Satan? And he is like, okay. So he you gives me my sheep. I have to. You give me my sheep. I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to renege on my deal. I, I hold my promises. <gasps> so he is like, uh, he kissed his hand and therefore he was now bound to Satan. But Pierre, you know, he started wavering back towards that Christianity. So Satan was like, hey, Michael, hey, Mikey, um, we need you to get Pierre back in line. And he was like, all right, man, like I also serve you, Dark Lord. So I'm going to bring him back to our satanic fold. So Mikey brings Pierre to a Sabbath and they dance in the flames of a special candle. And then they rub themselves with ointment and that ointment turned them into wolves. And then so after they've been doing this for a while, uh, Pierre ends up attacking a seven year old boy. Then he ate a four year old girl. He also said that as a wolf, he mated with other wolves and they had as much pleasure as if he had copulated with their wives. So he is apparently killing children and, and fucking, fucking wolves. wolves. And if you let a wolf, a wolf lets you fuck it, like, I mean, that's some hardcore stuff. I mean, like, I can't see a wolf just being like, hey, Pierre, like, sure, let's, let's do this. Let's get, let's get down. Um, and then Mikey ended up killing, like, we're making light of this, but he ended up apparently killing uh, five girls, but he only ate four of them. So that's oh, cool. That's weird. He was, um, full. he was full after that. Money. He was full, right? Uh, so they were tried in December 1521 and burnt at stake. Uh, so the next one that I want to talk about is uh, Giles or Giles, and not like our Buffy Giles, Garney. He was the werewolf of Dull. And so, uh, Giles had, he was a hermit and he got married and then he was like, crap, I have to feed me and my wife now. So I'm going to go out in the woods. I'm going to hunt for stuff. And one night while he was in the woods, uh, there was a specter and they gave him an ointment. So they're really into ointments during this time. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, some his yeah, some historians think that they were actually based. There was something that was hallucinogenic, that was Ooh. and these things that were rubbing on themselves, and like this is why they all think so like I like guess if like topical if you rooms. think you're gonna. Yeah, if you think you're going to be a wolf, and then you rub some topical belladonna or shrooms on you, then you're like, I'm a wolf. Like, you know, and I'm going to go fuck other wolves. So um, several children started going missing in this area. And so they went out into the woods to look for them. And I'm very much picturing that scene from Beauty and the Beast where they look, you know, where Gaston is like going out and looking the for torches. the beast. 
Yeah, the torches. They're like, must find the wolf. And then instead of finding the wolf, they found Giles hunched over the body of a child. Yikes. And so they take him in. And seems so damning. They- it seems like damning damning evidence it's pretty damning evidence so they take him in and so he confessed to stalking and murdering at least four children eating their flesh and regularly breaking off a leg to take home to his wife and i don't know like if he disguised the life or like did he just, like walk in with like a a, a child thigh it was like honey i'm home here's got our little, bucket got a little ruffled sock on it still a little <laughs> ruff- or, or like just like a bucket like, of kentucky fried chicken and it's oh, just like little like, children legs are in uh, it uh, so so awful we're terrible people i know um so uh what was interesting you know he was found guilty of crimes of lycanthropy and witchcraft and he was burned on the stake on january 18th on 1574 uh what was interesting about this was that he was actually tried by secular authorities and not the inquisition or the the church that was doing a lot of the other things so um but more than 50 witnesses came to his trial to his trial and they're like oh yeah he was attacking and killing children in the field sometimes eating their flesh um they said sometimes we see him in a human state in state and sometimes as a loop guru which i just love saying so um you know in new orleans they have the rigaroo um so that's basically also the kind of the same french duration so loop means man and guru means wolf i may have that backwards i don't know i'm not afraid i hate french uh but it's also just fun to say loop guru he's a loop guru uh, i just i love the word lycanthropy i wish i'm glad i do i do like lycanthropy yep yeah. so in 1582 and again i said i'm skipping skip a bunch of stories but king, our favorite king henry the fourth uh he commissioned uh two men to end the witchcraft were- werewolf and hearsay that was plaguing areas of france there were two men uh pierre de Lancoch, a judge and jean de espagnet a polymath i don't know what the fuck a polymath is you can look it up i'm sure somebody has that I- and it sounds like somebody who's like polygamous and like like really into like lots of different kinds of math. You know, like I like geometry and also trigonometry calculus. And <laughs> yeah. And calculus. Yeah. It's just a no. generic term for a person of wide ranging knowledge or learning. Weird. Okay. So yeah. That's a useless like a, word, right? Uh, that's a useless, yep. Okay. So men, women, and children and priests were tortured, tortured and murdered for their crimes. Um Lancares, Lancra, or whatever the fuck his French name was. Um, his work resulted in the execution of over 600 people over the course of three years. Um, he was also just a racist fuck and believed that most of the indigenous Basque community, so this is like northern France if we got the Basque in there, and also the Jewish community were responsible for the witchcraft and the black magic that were coming over Europe. So we have a really good excuse to go after uh, different sects of religions that you guys don't like and burn them. Uh, shocking. Never haven't heard that before. Mm. Um, and also Lancra was obsessed with the details surrounding black magic and werewolves and during his torture sessions he would often ask his victims about their cardinal encounters with demons and shockingly the more that he tortured them the more clear and vivid their their recollections became oh, um, weird how that happens weird how that happens so he's like so tell me about how you fuck the wolf did you fuck the wolf a lot uh, was a wolf in the shape of a demon so pretty much I'm thinking pervy guy that is tortured getting off on torture and wanting to hear somebody talk about fucking some demon loves. fucking because he didn't have the internet to watch that um oh. so his methods were so brutal that eventually they, they were like ah you can't be a judge anymore like we, we are done with that oh. um so they actually um took him out so um oh, so but according to him um any moral slight was worthy of torture so these are some of the things that he thought you know prov- you know was like this is why you should get tortured and burned at the stake all right mm-hmm. to dance indecently eat excessively make love diabolically diabolically uh commit atrocious acts of sodomy blaspheme scandalously avenge themselves insidiously run after all horrible dirty and crudely unnatural desires keep toads vipers and lizards and all sorts of poison as precious things this is my favorite love passionately a stinking goat caress him lovingly associate with and mate him in a disgusting and scarborough scarp 
uh, uh, some bad fashion. Are these not the uncontrolled characteristics of an unparalleled lightness of being and an excrobble something in constancy that can be expatiated only through the divine fire that justice placed in hell? So this guy would have definitely, we would have like, he would have gotten through like two check marks, like y'all are fucked, you're done. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's it yeah no i I, mean, he I, want that he, list. I would have i would have been dead at the first one right to dance indecently done eat yep. excessively did i need to tell you about like i hop has cupcake pancakes now and i just found out that i can get i have delivered to my house and they come with sprinkles in them and additional sprinkles and also like cupcake icing you can put on them that was my dinner tonight by the way um so yeah and also don't make love passionately to a sinking goat i mean but it was like what if you made love you know my head unpassionate but my head went immediately to um miracle workers of course (laughs) season two yes um so if you have if you've seen that if you have seen it it's not really that much not a spoiler but there's a you know mr shit shoveler and gobbler shit shoveler Oh, gobbler it was a love it was love maiden but it was like yeah you but you had to passionately fuck the goat like right. if you're just like oh man uh, i guess she just going got through the motion it's going through happened. the motion and just fucking the goat you can't caress it either like no uh, you just anyway so that was him uh then there was also henry bougie uh so i think he's we're just gonna call him bougie um so he presided over saint claude's criminal justice system for 15 years during the late 1500s and early 1600s historians allege that he sent more than 600 people to their death uh he bougie said it was like 80 and there are records the but you look at the records they're like yeah it was probably around 30 you know but still um he was also just a piece of shit and he executed a child because she liked to run around on all fours and act like a wolf yeah fuck that dude fuck you fuck you bougie and in court they're like oh no she attacked some kids but they're probably like she was dirty and poor and so they and actually- are probably making fun of her for <laughs> crawling around and like a dog well you you also have a niece who likes to run around and meow like a cat i know so- i did it too as a kid that's what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. she probably got made fun of because uh, i might have might have yep. yeah so, but in total, uh, over this time period, the French, this is why I focus on, they accused roughly 30,000 people of lycanthropy between 1530 and 1640. So, craziness that we don't talk about this as much as the witch trials. No. I mean, obviously, it was huge. Um, and so, you know, really, so well, kind of why? I was like, well, this is, like I said, our favorite time in France, you know, where we have our demon nuns, we have like the regular, you know, Martha's running around getting, mm-hmm. she's getting possessed. We've got the Protestants and Catholics fighting. We've yeah. got Puritanism. That's just like, everything's about, we've got a satanic panic happening, basically. And there's like, sins and monsters, you must turn into a wolf. Um, and although 1521 was like the first werewolf trial, this had actually started on like on a mass scale, like even earlier. The Valet witch trials, which began in 1428, they don't know the numbers of that. It's like dozens to hundreds, depending on, you know, but they didn't have really good records then. Yeah. Um, so they were, you know, basically accusing people of being sorcerers, which are witches and werewolves. So they're all tortured. Most were beheaded and burnt at the stake. Um, a lot of times the accused, the accused were end up being tied with like tied the ladders and they would put gunpowder around their neck and then so then they would put them into a fire so they put gunpowder around your neck on a ladder then shove you into a fire and then you would explode that's upsetting Uh, yeah um another odd fact like huh why is this happening especially in the the lab area um if you were found guilty um you automatically had to forfeit your lands to the vassals oh. and lords shocking That's weird That's i know crazy. so weird um so because this worked so well for them then also the holy roman empire was like hey we do as witches too yeah okay you're, witches. you're a witch not really um so but there are also those who think that you know werewolves are just a way to explain psychopathy psychopathy and just serial killers in general uh there's a german one where this guy like literally was like running around killing like a bunch of fucking kids and they're like oh he's a werewolf not like he's a serial killer like but so that's one thought of it there is actually like clinical like like 
I can't say any more. Clinical wolfy, werewolfiness. How about we go with that? Clinical werewolfiness. Um, um, so that's where a, a person actually thinks they can transform into a werewolf um, or another predator. And there was a doctor named Dr. Jan Dirk Blom who studied this in 1850. And he found at least 13 cases where people identified as transforming into werewolves. Um, so that over a 150 year period. And although that was rare, it was enough to be like, hey, maybe this is an actual mental illness this you know so you can you know if you identified as a werewolf back then like you could have been mentally ill uh, but i do think that sarah gamble the one who wrote this episode i think she had a really great take on all this even though she was not talking about the werewolf trials i think it right. applies uh, so this is quoting directly from the writer of this episode. So werewolves are a metaphor for repression. There are so many human impulses that for whatever cultural reason or religious reason, we repress. And I think the psychological act of repressing something is what twists it and makes it dangerous over time because the things you repress never go away. I think one of the people reasons people love werewolves is because they say something very clear that we all understand the fear that we're all going to snap. Ooh. Ooh. Which is like pretty deep, but also I think, you know, why it makes sense kind of like beyond just, you know, I'm a witch, you know, accusing someone of being a witch, but also accusing somebody of being a werewolf is yeah. it's an animal, it's an animal state, right? right. This, you know, this explains why you lost your control and you ate, you know, you had a bucket of children legs. Um, maybe not that, but you know, it's you really just that. Shit. You lost your shit. And it's just also, especially like in a time where, you know, puritanical nonsense is like raining and being like, you have to be really moral. You have to repress all this, you know, yeah. your your natural desire is to eat, to dance, to fuck a goat, whatever your natural desire is. But you end up repressing this like enough eventually, <sighs> like as the, as humans, like, you know, we're all kind of have that fear that yeah. what if I let loose? Right. And I think we're going to see that a lot in this episode, which is why I wanted to bring this up at the front too. Just that idea of like what ends that up that happening theme. through that theme of trying to hold things back. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we'll talk about what happens. So that is the real trials. There is a ton more information on this. There's so many good stories. Um, I'm going to link a bunch of them in the show notes, but highly, um, I also think, um, fuck, what's the name of their podcast? Uh, uh, I'll link, their, I'll, link, I'll link their podcast in here too because I can't remember anything right now. Um, they did a really great like two or three parter episode on this a long time ago. So um, uh, I love the werewolf trials. I don't understand why we don't talk about them as much. I think they're really cool. Me either. Like, it's not, fascinating. You know, not like they're, a like it's, it's inter cool it's like interesting. I, interesting yeah i was like i don't enjoy watching you know people getting accused and blown up on a ladder right. but no, that seems well awesome. maybe it depends who it is but uh <laughs> you know yeah, so werewolf trials. All right, so um, where we're at, just remind everybody and Diana, we're going okay. back to they're going to go talk to Maddie. Super yeah. excited. Dean is stoked that we're talking about fucking werewolves. Well, he's also stoked that he knows how to kill them, right? That's he's like, it. we don't have, like, we don't have to do any research. We know yeah, what we get. Yeah, We've got our silver bullets ready, and him, uh, he, but he thinks werewolves are badass. He basically says. So. Anyway, so they are, show up as quote unquote detectives to go visit. Who we, did you know catch her. their did you catch their names i did it's um oh i wrote it. Mm -hmm. right. oh landon and dante landis and dante do you know landis. why that's do you know why those names are good no the blackness on your face says no uh so uh john landis directed american werewolf in london oh. and joe dante directed the howling got it i, I wrote them down because i knew it would be some reference and i forgot to look at the dark oh, i'm sorry yeah that's okay you know. Like them. So they're visiting Madison is her name, the girl that was at the office party, the girl that found her boss dead. And she um, and they say they're detectives, of course. So she's has her neighbor, Glenn, who's real fucking weird, is there. Not that's rude. Very awkward, nerdy gentleman. No, nope, he's a, fucking weird. I don't like a, him. In a in a very uh, in a church t-shirt is there. Um, and he leaves. That's her neighbor, Glenn. So she basically explains that she worked for her boss, Nate, for two years. Um, but and that basically after a couple of scotches, he'd, quote, hit on anyone in a five mile radius. And there's a long pause as Sam looks at Dean at this moment. Yeah, but, you know, Dean, I mean, you're a douchey, but at least you're not, you know, hitting on your fucking 
employee. Employee, anyway. yeah. But so um, they, you know, Dean asks her about any enemies that Nate might have had, and um, she's, you know, not really him, but she talks, does talk about her ex, Kurt Mueller, and that um, apparently the ex Kurt was his emo boy that I had written down. So he's convinced that Madison was hooking up with Nate. And there was actually to the point that he came into the office and there was an office altercation, which is fucking bonkers. Like that kind of shit. Like, I don't understand how people do that stuff. But anyways, there was literally like an altercation in the office between the two of them. So they're like, oh shit. All right, the ex is a werewolf. Let's go. So they cut out to go yeah, look for yeah. and so also just a Madison comment on this too. Okay. So she clearly cannot understand that her creepy neighbor, Glenn, wants to bone her. We're like, because it's completely obvious. She's like, oh, he's sweet. And I'm like, no, honey, he wants to fuck you. That's why he's over here. Your boss is a dick. And this is not funny, like what he's doing to you. Um, and at least like you recognize that uh, your emo boyfriend is uh, a problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, right, so, go on. so she's alone in her kitchen. She hears a dog barking outside and sees Kurt out the window watching her through the window, but then he disappears. So they're really like, the show is actually really setting us up to believe that Kurt is this werewolf. Because there was the dogs by the trash cans and we saw him by her car. Now there's a dog uh, barking outside and she sees um, Kurt watching her outside. So they really like set that tone. So it's kind of interesting. Um we cut to a high rise um, apartment at night. And of course, Sam and Dean do like they do and break into fucking Kurt's place. So that would be an E like they do uh, into Kurt's place. But it looks pretty normal overall, but there's something watching them. You can tell there's like the, the weird watery cutaway from another camera angle. Um, and they are, they check the fridge. And they're about to check the freezer for hearts. They want to see if they're storing the hearts there. Uh, but then they hear a noise on the balcony. So they go outside and you see like these crazy claw marks. Yeah, but also the noise outside they heard were trash cans. And so I have a theory that at this point, I'm like, nah, this is not werewolves. This is trash pandas. You have way more <laughs> trash pandas that are just like, extreme they're just like extreme trash pandas. Extreme trash pandas. And so they're just wear raccoons that are, that's that's what I wish like had, they turned it to. That's my, that's Didn't my. Did you read a book that had were raccoons? God damn it. I did read a book that had shapeshifters and one of them was a trash panda. Yeah, if I did. I was I downloaded a swear and I can't find it. Anyways, all right. So um, there's these crazy big gouges in this concrete balcony. Uh, look like claws of something like sliding down almost from the balcony. So, anyways, on the ground we see a cop strolling around through this alley below the building, and uh, here's a noise in the alley. And of course, he goes to look at what it is, and all of a sudden you see him get attacked by something. You don't see what, and he shoots. Um, one one round and then um, yeah so they, Sam and Dean hear the gunshot and run downstairs to find the cop's body. Yeah, we also heard it because I was like ruff ruff bang, <laughs> so yeah. it was like Arr! and then oh. he got shot. And then yep. Uh, so at this point they're like, well, this is fucked up. We better go find Madison because they think that emo boy just killed this cop and is Kurt. Sorry, is and is now going to go you kill can call Madison. Emo boy. It's fine. I mean, I'm not wrong. You saw it too, right? You see it, or at least now that I'm saying, okay. So she, um, so they get, and of course, as soon as they get over there, good old Glenn's checking in on why they're there. So being a creeper like he is. So, mm -hmm. um, she does tell them that Kurt was watching her through the window. And so they figure out like, one of us should stay with you and they go back and forth but um and do a a, a game of rock paper scissors that sam easily wins because apparently dean only ever picks scissors which is yep. a terrible strategy for rock paper scissors by the way uh, but, so, but dean doesn't learn always always with the scissors dean Andy. So, so Sam gets to stay with Madison, um, and then uh, Dean is off to go check out the body shop that Kurt owned, ran, whatever. Yeah. Worked at, I don't know, something. Yeah. So, and there's a real awkward scene with Madison, like offering for Sam to sit on the couch so it's more comfortable. And he's like, no, I'm just going to sit at this table real awkwardly. So she dumps her underwear laundry out on the table in front of her. What the fuck, Madison? What the... 
also your underwear is very small and so like i'm sorry like if you if any lady and for the most part women i mean tell me if i'm wrong even if we do have sexy underwear that's in our laundry basket there's also gonna be a shit ton of non-sexy underwear that comes popping out of that like probably yeah yeah. i mean i i am i I mean you want to talk about your sexy underwear no, I, just, I wear thongs. That's just my thing. So a lot of my underwear are small, but they're not necessarily sexy. So yeah, okay. They're not by I, default I, have, sexy. I have a big ass. None of my underwear is small. So. But, but <laughs> I definitely have the not sexy ones. And I was like making sure I move the laundry basket before I have big guests come over because I don't want yeah, them looking at well, my fucking underwear. Like I'm not going to well, dump that like- out. Yeah, no woman is going to jump out her and entire, my, like, underwear in front of the man. And they're not all going to be the silky silkies. That's no way on earth that's yeah, happening. No, your period and panties are going to show up in also there. Also, like, like, that is not how I would ever flirt with a dude at my place. Like, ever. No, no. It's all very awkward. And I'm just like, I don't know, it's Maddie. I don't, you've got some weird ideas, but... Yeah. So anyway, so Sam quickly moves to the sofa from that point. But Dean calls, and Kurt hasn't been at work for a while, and uh, is and Dean is really into teasing Sam about Madison because he knows Sam's, which pregnant. I thought was a very a replay of the Meg thing. Mm-hmm. So Dean's just like, I'm in a car. Why don't you be a dog, Sam? Be a dog. Oh, yeah. Many house. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> Sam ends up getting sucked into watching a show with Madison. Like, go for it. <laughs> okay. So I, I I went hard on this one. Okay. Oh man. So all right, we know they were watching a soap opera. I right? figured, yeah, I wrote soap yeah. opera. So and I was like, okay, they're watching, and then they go. So at the end, I was like, so Kendall married Ethan's father just to get back at him. So I was because at first I thought it was going to be Days of Our Lives because right. Jensen Ackles on Days of Our Lives, right? But uh, so. Kendall and Ethan, that's all my children. So, but Sarah Michelle Geller played Kendall up until like 1995. Um, but so then to go really hard on this, so Ethan was played by James Scott, who also played EJ Demera on Days of Our Lives. So Jensen played Eric Brady in 1997, and that was a year character Ethan was born. Now, according to Soap Opera Digest, both characters are coming back as rivals. And that is a six degree of separation to Jensen Ackles on Days of Our Lives and this episode of All My Children. Boom. I don't know how I made that work. I made that math work. That's that's what I do. It's a lot. Wow. It's a lot. But I made it happen. Okay, so. So, yeah, they get really into it. And uh, so Sam starts doing his thing like where he talks about the feels because that's what Sam does. So he's asking Madison about how, why like, why was she with Kurt and blah, blah, blah. And she basically does the, you know, the the not to negate or to put down this, but that she was the, this very common of uh, she was too insecure to leave. Yeah. Also, and, dude's like, I'm sorry, no matter what girl you're dating, if she's ended up dating an abusive guy, don't ask her why. It's like that's fucked up. Like, yeah, there's a lot of reasons women get into these relationships. Like, yeah. fuck off, Sam. But so, and then she explains that after she got mugged. She took control of her life and dumped Ken, uh, dumped Kurt and like all this stuff kind of just like started her life started just like kept getting going better in general because she just took control of things and it was an overall positive and um, you know and there's a laugh about how like something so bad happening to you could be a positive and and Sam calls her unusual and impressive so you can yeah. tell he's like oh it's not just that she's pretty she's also special yeah I, I appreciate you it's not just you know this girl that i met a day ago it's not just that you're hot it's it's your insides i'm attracted to your i'm attracted to your insides but also both of us are really terrible at flirting and it's just fucking awkward and it's like yeah. oh man like i can't believe they ever you ever get to bone like i because yeah yeah so dean of calls he's at a strip club tipping a dancer watching kurt that's the yeah, tip, yeah, tipping a dancer a dollar, you fucking douche. Like, tip, tip that girl more than a dollar. And it's, it's also weird they don't—they only show like her feet. <laughs> just, I like, noticed her, that too. <laughs> I was like, that's hilarious. All they can show is the shoes. All right. Like, do you think? <laughs> like, was it just like somebody, like a girl who worked on set, and they're like, can Probably. you just? We, we don't. We don't want to put an actual. Like, just put, just these, put shoes these shoes on. on. Or a man, they just put their shoes on a man with their calves. Oh my god. <laughs> That would be fantastic. Shave your legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or are, who's who's like the swimmer in the bunch? Yeah. Like, or, the, or the cyclist. So both of those and some are frequently leg shavers too. 
for in the male group. But <laughs> anyways, all right. So Madison goes to bed and tries to, it's like the top more awkward flirting uh, leaves the door cracked while Sam stays up to watch TV because he's protecting her, right? Well, Dean is hanging out at Kurt's place, like right outside of it with a gun because he's like, all right, I'm going to go in there and get him or I'm just going to wait for them to happen. And so he runs up to the apartment and when he hears glass break and instead of it being Kurt, that's the werewolf, there's a woman standing over Kurt and Kurt is dead. And uh, it, this woman is fucking Madison. Madison <gasps> is the werewolf. Holy shit. And she knocks Dean down, knocks him out. Um, she's got like crazy bright blue eyes and fangs and she escapes. Yeah. So a couple of things. Did you notice what was playing? No, it was a Stooges that. song. What? Yeah. How did I not yeah. notice that? I don't know, but there was a Stooges song playing. Uh, but I also wanted to get your was take. It be, be your dog. It kidding. was not, which would have been a really great like. If they, I want to be your dog was playing, would have been fantastic. But like I forget, this. I forget which song it was. But yeah, the Sorry. Stooges are playing. I, I dropped the ball. I was so th- shocked at Madison being the werewolf. Yeah. Well, so what did you think about their take on the werewolf? I mean, it was moderately better than the vampire <laughs> i'm i'm not like i don't know i it wasn't my jam like i may i'm i like mooney you know what i mean if i'm gonna talk about my my lycanthropes so yeah. i want my i like like go all in it's got to be like the fucking wolf monster man like that's what i expect i want my you know go full professor lupin with it or whatever you need to do i just i don't know i was like <laughs> She just kind of, she kind of looked like a vampire from Buffy. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're not wrong. I mean, and you know, from what I read, a lot of this was a practical decision. It was one of the reasons that Kripke had said he kind of didn't want to have werewolves at all before this. Yeah. Um, just because like, putting somebody into the wolf yeah it's expensive it's hard to get the wolf you know the furry thing and like i mean great like buffy like we look at like werewolves throughout tv because you end up with like the really shitty oz like which was just like terrible like i've seen so many terrible werewolves and so unless like you're cgiing a wolf in um yeah. I don't know. It's an interesting choice. Like, so, I mean, we get to see a little bit more as she's like transforming later, but. Right. But I didn't think that was very, I didn't, felt like, like that was a little incongruent with even what they showed here. Like it didn't really seem, I don't know. Like it was. Like, why is there no hair? Like, that's like, I don't get that you're a werewolf. Mm-mm. You're like a monster thing. Okay. Your nails are long and your face looks scary. That's what we get. Yeah. That's it. And apparently maybe you howl and you play in garbage. Like, you know, that's bark occasionally you bark like you know like but there was no like i don't know there's nothing in this it wasn't wolfy. that says werewolf no yeah not wolfy at all to me yeah so i was disappointed so. with that so yeah. all so, right so she's been stabbed and she runs off yeah and dean dean calls sam as soon as he wakes up and he's like uh the fuck where you did she was just here she's a fucking werewolf i should it was or left like a while ago sam's like what are you talking about i've been here all night and uh she's been in bed and sam's like or dean's like no go check i cut her arm and he goes in there and of course boom 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 now she'd gone to bed in clothes but now she's naked in her sheets and she has this cut on her arm from fighting with dean and but she seems super fucking confused she's like why am i naked where did this cut come from the fuck is going on so sam locks her in the apartment and uh went to get her yeah so i really really creepy um, not, ter- oh, not, sc- not terrifying her at all you know no especially for someone who's confused has clearly just gotten out of abusive relationship now she is woken up with naked. Tied, naked her mind missing and then now there's a man who's locking the door and tying her to a chair yeah yeah that's fucked up <laughs> so she thinks that sam is crazy and she insists that she's not a fucking werewolf because they don't exist and that's stupid basically so she doesn't believe any of this shit and like it's it's kind of an it, i don't know and this is also where she obviously obviously at this point she's like oh you're not really detectives either <laughs> so ding 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 winner um and so she thinks that um sam's like wait she might really not know that this is what she is um and it's a monster that doesn't know that it wants to 
to kill things. It's like this whole thing. Um, he's kind of like freaked out, I think. I get the impression that Sam is freaked out at this point when he's like processing this. He's like, she really doesn't fucking know that she's this thing, but she obviously is. So his intent is that he wants to try to kill the wolf that turned her to see if that undoes it because that's one of their theories it was their dad's theory it was bobby's theory this is the only theory they not have. bobby's theory this does because oh, no. so bobby, I bobby yeah. did too later they call no, bobby bobby, la- bobby later tells them they're morons oh, okay. or idiots he's like you're fucking idiots so that's ridiculous uh but yeah well, it was but dad's dad, john had yeah. the theory that this yeah. could this would be the only thing that you could possibly undo lycanthropy I just want to say that as much as I can. Uh, So she got mugged a month ago and um, Sam made a guess that she was bitten during her mugging and they see this bite mark on the back of her neck. And yeah, it's this creepy little bite mark. That was it. So Sam's like, fuck it. Let's go find the original werewolf to save her. And um, Sam's like, I'll stay here. I'll kill her if she turns. Dean, you go wolf hunting. Oh. Um, and then we cut to a blonde uh, sex worker, obviously like cliche. Walking in a fur vest, though, which I thought was an interesting choice. It's like, uh, it's like somebody. It's like somebody went to like the upscale costume shop to buy a hooker costume. I was okay. like, so is this like where you spent your wolf fur money on? Like, we're just gonna put it all on the sex worker? Like, okay, cool. Like, we can't afford to turn you into a wolf, I but I can buy that. this That's fake hilarious. fur for her. Um, so. As as we see this happening, and you can tell she's being this this, and I'm just I don't mean this is an offensive term. It's just like how they played out in the show. This hooker walking. It's um, we see Madison. Uh, we cut back to Madison, and she's turning, and she breaks free. And so Sam has to pull the gun. Then we cut to the hooker being chased, and then Sam locks Madison in the closet. And then Dean, um, right when um, the werewolf is attacking the hooker, he's able to shoot it, but it's the neighbor. Glenn, creepy fucking Glenn. Yeah, creepy Glenn. Oh no. But didn't see that one coming. As he's bleeding out, he turns back into a human and he didn't fucking know what he was either. Yeah. He was, just, he, was just, he was just a creepy neighbor who happened to be a werewolf. Yeah. So, but I think this also goes into that repression idea, right? So, wow. Maddie's, you know, her victims have been people that have been, you know, hurt her. Or hurting her. her so that's where her subconscious is going and glenn's is going into mm, i am a there. serial Ooh. killer and i'm killing sex workers so and he attacked the girl that he wanted to fuck yeah oh. so i think if you go I didn't back to go what, there that gets real creepy ew well it also goes back to you know if you don't you said sarah was the writer and she's talking in, in her mind yeah. the metaphor for the wolf is we're repressing our desires and it could also just be he was just a loser and he couldn't bone chicks so he's this weird creepy dude so he's going after women and interesting enough you know we up, like going after the easy targets right and which is and if you think about you know what i was talking earlier about the idea of the werewolves going after you know the trials being something that was a way to explain away serial killers of the time. Because serial yeah. killers isn't something we really thought about until like the 70s, right? We right. like and you had Jack the Ripper, but there wasn't like, and there were obviously people who were doing this before. It's just not something that really was, I think a lot of it just had to do with how you know police work was done and yeah. people not tracking, talking to each communicating other. Yeah. and documenting it all and connecting it all. Yeah. Yeah, but this also ties in, you know, he's basically a serial killer, right? Which is what the cops are looking for. Um, So, yeah, I I don't want to give serial killers like wolf powers now on top of all the other shit they have. But I think that I think it's an interesting parallel. Yeah, for sure. Weird. Okay. well, we cut back to the um, the apartment and Sam opens the closet door, turns on the light and Madison wakes up normal again. And you can see though, inside the door is like insanely scratched up. She's like, she scratched his fucking face and like all this. And he promises that she'll never see him again. Cause that was one of the things he had promised her when she was tied up. And so she looks around the, she's like, they, he, he walks away, Sam leaves. And she's like, just looking around and seeing all the damage she did in the closet that she doesn't remember doing. It was kind of intense. Yeah, can you also imagine me on the other side of that door and hearing nails scrape oh. across that shit for like all night long? Hours. Ew, oh my God. Like, oh God. Like, I really hate nails on chalkboard. Like, it's one of the sound. Like, I do not really? like it bothers you that much. 
if I heard like four hours of it, yeah. I mean, honestly, the one that really gets me more is the sound of cotton inside of um, medicine pill, like medicine jars. That's the one that really gets me because um, it makes a weird squeaky sound. I don't like it. Um, but yeah, also <laughs> like, but the idea like her, like how, like these nails are fucking powerful too. If you like no shit. all that like, damage. Cut like, all that drywall. Man, she could get a fucking job doing that shit. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, werewolves need jobs too uh there's a construction like like staff shortage right now don't you know anyways i also have a lot of papers i need shredded there, there you go i mean there's it's important work yeah i mean the right. kitty the kitty sits in my box of the stuff that needs to be shredded and i'm like come on girl get like just whip, get the whip out those claws like do some madison okay sorry <clears throat> All right. So Dean at this point finally acknowledges they're back in the car. They're sitting in baby out front of the uh, front of the apartment. This is a big thing, I think, for Dean, because he actually acknowledges that it's sad that Glenn didn't know what he was that. Uh, and that, you know, we've always, you know, the whole like all along has been Dean's like, fuck it, you're evil, you're evil, you die. That's it. Doesn't matter if you're mostly evil, not evil. Doesn't, have, doesn't matter if you don't know you're fucking evil. Like he's like, no, it, this was actually kind of sad. I think that was a big deal. And they're kind of wondering why Glenn didn't try to kill her. Yeah. And then you lose all sympathy for Dean when he says that she, maybe he was looking for some hot breeding action. Yeah. So Glenn could also, we know Glenn could have just fucked a wolf because apparently oh. like that's, you know, really cool too. So, I mean, wait, Glenn. <sighs> So then, of course, Dean's hinting around at what Sam and Dean or Sam and Madison may have done, but um, that Sam's like, no, she thinks I'm a lunatic. Then all of a sudden she knocks on the window and says what we've said on this show. And I've said many times <laughs> is that for being on a stakeout, this car is a big conspicuous. It is. Very fucking true. Very fucking true. That's true. Uh, so Dean's like, yeah, we're totally fucking lurking to see if you turn turn tonight. We're we're hanging around. She's like, well, that's dumb. Just come inside then, because I'm starting to believe you. Because I'm processing, and, and I'm trying to, and she's really trying to process what she might have done. Because now, if she believes them, this means this would be like, not to be dramatic, but like you or I waking up one day and then finding out that every night we went out and killed a motherfucker, and like having to like deal with that. That's crazy. That's really upsetting. You're laughing at me. This is famous. <laughs> I'm like, that's upsetting. That would be really upsetting to know that you like un like unknowingly killed people. That's upsetting. So well, I mean, she was kill she was violently. killing her enemies. So I mean, well, that's what Liz is like, fuck it, they deserved it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, it's got it's a, it's an ethical and a deep ethical dilemma that she's facing at this point as she's processing that the scariest thing is just that you're out doing things that you don't know you're doing at all. So Anyways, um, yeah. So Dean, they're just trying to like kind of sitting around and while they're just watching her for the night to make sure she doesn't turn again. And the next morning, you know, the sun comes up and it worked. She did not turn, uh, and everybody's happy. Um, and uh, Madison gives Sam a real friendly hug. So Dean heads to the hotel to watch pay per view, like he does. And yeah, leaving. So sexy asian beauties or asian sexy beauties sexy asian i forget which one it is Something, yeah. uh yeah but i mean it's also just like the clear third wheel in, oh, in yeah, this situation super awkward. yeah so. he needed he needed to go so now we've got sam and madison alone and they're yeah anyway and then they do it they do it they there's do a lot it. they're making out they're fucking i don't i'm like when did somebody light a fire in the fireplace i don't fucking know i did I wonder know. that too i was like <laughs> so at some point like they're like we're gonna oh, make no. out against this wall like heavenly hold on what would be really lovely right now is if we had a fire yeah. um also do enjoy all of my sex faces and so there's a lot of sex faces that are happening and a lot of like intense kissing and is this uh, like i do know oh go ahead I will say, um, from a production standpoint, they waited to film this until the end so that they could get to know each other better. And they also like locked down the set. So oh. I think, you know, it was well done on, on your part, Kim. Yeah, that was, that was helpful. But yeah. So what's bizarre though is so this, uh, this started at dawn when Dean was leaving because they were excited because they, she didn't turn overnight, right? Yeah. And then I guess they didn't really sleep the night before, but it's all of a sudden nighttime. Yeah, they fucked all day. 
They, that's what they did. They fucked all day and then they fell asleep in all of her white bedding. Why do you have so much white bedding? That is so stressful. I'm just like, as much as I love like a glorious, like white comforter and white sheets, that's only in four hotels because some other person is responsible for cleaning all my makeup up off those pillows when I pass out there and anything else. Uh, uh, should, like, especially you were fucking all day in well, all those white sheets. That's the good thing about white sheets is you can bleach them. But um, anyway, so. I was just like, wait a minute, now it's nighttime? I'm very confused. That sounds exhausting. Anyways, uh, so it's nighttime, it's full moon. Sam wakes up and she's not in the bed. She's turned and she's by the window and he sees her jump out of the window. And then it's dawn again, pretty much. I don't know where my mind was going. My note says Maddie is back to being a sex monster. (laughs) What? I don't know Oh my God. Well, anyway, so Sam goes and gets Dean like he does. And, and, um, I don't know. I, I misheard the Bobby thing, but either way. So they're like, well, they're trying to like troubleshoot what it might be like, does she have to be asleep or like what's going on? Is that why she didn't turn the night before? Sam still just totally convinced they have to find a way to undo it. This is not, not, not how it needs to go. He, he, He can't imagine killing her because Sam's really like, it's like me. If you think there's like, if you're saying we have to kill her because there's a little bit of evil in her, don't, wouldn't I fall in the same category because there's evil in me too? And so- um, And I'm really tired of that analogy. I am too, but also, I mean, he kind of had a point. I felt bad for him. But anyways, so- hey, But we've done this before. Yeah, we play this game. So Madison calls Sam. She's crying. She doesn't know where the fuck she is. They get her back to her place. She didn't remember where she was, what she didn't, She all she's afraid of is that she might've killed somebody. And then Dean has to tell her the truth at this point that, look, we've we've scoured every source. There's no cure. There's nothing we can do. And Sam really doesn't want to admit it. But Madison's like, no, I can't live like this, like not knowing what I'm doing. I don't want to hurt anybody. I And she asks Sam to kill her. And this is where I'm like, oh, fuck, we're going there. And which is also ironic because I think about how many times Sam has asked Dean to kill him. Mm-hmm. But um so she doesn't want to she doesn't want to die but she can't live and this is her way of being the only way for her to be saved is for him to kill her is how she, is what she says dean takes the gun because he's like no fuck this we're not doing that and they walk away but um and sam's crying dean offers to do it for him but sam's like no i have to do it she asked me to do it and so he takes the gun and tells dean to wait for him and dean we see a scene of dean crying no, so we pretty... see a, a single man tear. We Dean is not crying. Okay, single man tear. Dean, man Dean, can, Dean cannot cry. He can only have one tear. So, well, Dean has his single man tear that shows that he has some level of emotion. And then you hear a gunshot and that's it. And it ends. And as much as like I am cynical, yeah, I saw there was something in my eye when this ended. Like, because it, it was pretty was a really intense, sad ending. Because like it's usually, because so you you've got like you usually you've got some level of either the well, it was a bad guy, it was a monster that was might have been redeemable, but probably not. There was no other choice, right? That's usually how it's going on these. Or you've got, you know, it was self-defense. Like that was the only option. You put something like that. You don't usually have the character or it was some self-sacrifice or something. And it was to an extent here, but putting that on Sam, in addition to Madison, who was a fairly likable character when she wasn't wolfy, without that she was ever wolfy because they sucked at that part. But when she wasn't being monstery, you know, like she was a likable enough character other than her shitty flirtation. And like, it was just a really like, I don't know. It was just like a dark feeling. Like Sam, we all know Sam's got all his fucking issues and he finally hooks up with a chick and then now he had to fucking kill her after he's begging his brother to kill him. Like there's like layers of emotional fucked upness with this episode. I also think it's a lazy solution. Like she's clearly not okay. This only happens. They did this on Buffy. They just locked Oz and put him in the chains. Didn't they? They alluded to that at one point. And she's like, "Well, she could get out." Well, so fucking what? Like, so she gets out every once in a while and munches on something. Big deal. Um, But I mean, really, to me, it's like you know, she normally like during the day 
she's not a monster she right. only like and i do it's also a, kind of wondering like the once a month thing is this alluding to like female shit but um mm-hmm. but it's still like you know hey like once a month, she's gonna, you know, get a lot of PMS that goes through her, as I think Willow said and Buffy. Like once a month, I'm not fun to be around, you know. Um, but you could have found a solution. Like I don't know. Like I don't think this was the appropriate solution. <laughs> like it just it seems bizarre to me. Like this is the, the way that you went. If you knew that most of the time she was normal. And then she had a couple of days a month where she turned into a a werewolf. Like, I mean, that is obviously not the majority of how she spends her time. If it's night nighttime, a couple days a month, as opposed to every other hour of her life. Yeah, that's pretty broad. I think it's fucked up. Like, it's like, hey, man, like, figure something out. You you just turned me on this because I was like, that's what they had to do. But so sad. And I'm like. Because a part of me was like, well, maybe they could have found a way, but still, I get it. Da, da, da. Now I'm like, no, you're right. That was fucking bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. Madison didn't have to die. Hashtag. Hashtag save Maddie. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I it's good for it's good for a storyline. It is. It's really emotional. It drives a lot of things home. But I mean, in the end, you know, if this if it was not Madison and if it was Sam. Would do you not just lock him up like a couple of exactly. days of the month? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's lazy. Yep. So damn, you just changed my whole world on that. I don't know how I feel about it because I was all like, uh, it's sweet and sad and had to be done. Well, and for the most part, I'm like, yeah. I'm like yeah. gross. I mean, honestly, for the most time, I'm never gonna be killed a monster because I think, especially when they're monsters like this and they're very complex and they're not evil 100 percent of the time I, it's to me it doesn't make sense like i, I think you, we can come up with another solution but you believe in redemption is that what you're saying Liz? <sighs> i mean i just don't think in punishing somebody for having you know, if you, especially if you think about the idea of this is some you know werewolves are something you know saying this is what happens and we can't repress our emotions there are lots of times that I can't repress my repress my emotions. Although yeah. I, I shove them down inside and feed them with liquor for the most part. But occasionally I drink too much liquor and they come out. And, you know, but you shouldn't kill me just because I was unable to stop whatever carnal or- urges I had, you know, or violent or I'm not saying I can run around killing somebody when my emotions come out. But at the same time, like, eh, you know. Well, shit. This is emotional ish emotional episode, regardless. Yeah, next week I promise it'll be a fun episode. I'm excited about next week. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll get to have a happier ending next time. I think I don't know. I don't know if the well, ending of next well, week. Sam is. had a happy ending until Sam, the very end. <laughs> Sam did have a happy ending. I mean, maybe he'll be a little more laid back. You know, now that he got some release. But you know, I mean, hey, Ooh. I got to see Jared Padalecki's weird sex face. Ew. Yeah. On that note. On that good. note. That's all I got. <laughs> all I got. All right. Oh. Cheers, jerk. Cheers, bitch. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Devil's Trap Podcast, Twitter, Devil's Trap Pod, or you can email us, Devil's Trap at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave reviews, and share it with all your friends. We're available at all your major podcast listening devices, so you can always find us at devilstrappodcast.com. Thanks! Devil's Trap Podcast is a Don't Be a Dick production. Meow! Intro music, arrangement and performance by Dave Cox. Piano arrangement and performance by Bobby Orozco. Meow! Meow!